Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. This is going to be for you guys who still own some 3800s, 3880s from Epson. This also applies to 4800, 4880, 5800, 5880s, and I think they go all the way up to 6800. These are the regular K3 ink printers, Ultra Chrome K3 inks from Epson. Now, Refillables are available for a lot of these printers, but often they do not report actual ink levels and you have to rely on physically opening the door and looking at the translucent card to see if you actually have ink because they are always reporting as being full. And besides, the air that is left inside the cartridge is in contact with the ink itself. Now, original cartridges use an internal ink bag that is basically sealed to the environment. And the only time that ink bag is exposed to anything is when the spigot enters. The stem that picks up the ink enters into the valve. And now the internal area or the internal space is pressurized that pushes against the bag and ink is able to be delivered to the printer. Now many of you have learned from me how to modify these cartridges. Why do that? Well, you can reset the chip you will get total ink level reporting and you're using OEM, which is traditionally, in fact, no, not traditionally, known to be the better way to go, okay? Now, what do I fill them with? Whatever ink I choose to, third party from anyone, or like I do, I buy large format cartridges. I have them all around me and I aspirate the ink and use that ink to refill my cartridges. Now. Here's what people have experienced and what I originally experienced. I had a six part video series that took you through everything about these cards from external examination, internal examination, complete dissection of the system. We even sacrificed a couple of cartridges to see what the valve looks like inside the ink bag. And then we came up with a method to refill these cartridges and do it safely. Now, of course, that took a lot of work to do just one cart. So we try to come up with a different method and someone else provided me with a method that they said worked very well. It involved sticking a needle around the poppet valve and, you know, try to puncture something. I tried that. Yeah, it worked, but really it was very dangerous, okay, to do. So look at my video it's number seven i think in the series this is where i show you how to take the valve apart how to pop the rear cap on the valve which is only accessible from the outside but rather than work blind like this other system or other process method someone else gave me you at least have some kind of visual guidance as to what you are doing so you don't harm everything now what happens you fill it up with ink and again all this is covered on the video series. You fill it up with ink, you pop it into your printer, and when you're ready to print, you'll hear the pressurization pump working, it will pressurize the ink, and then it leaks all over the place. And you wonder what the hell happened. Well, what happened was that the ink stem on the printer that goes through the sealing O-ring, and it's very hard to see, but it's right there, is no longer sealing. Why? you damage the o-ring how did the o-ring become damaged when you try to pop the rear cap without disassembling the actual valve you try to you know circumvent that by going around it and something happened and you caused that o-ring to no longer seal around that ink stem on the printer so what happens when you're not pressurized nothing happens nothing nothing at all but when you start to print the printer will repressurize this card if that o-ring is sealing properly around the ink stem nothing happens because the seal is stronger than it needs to be to prevent leaks even when the card is pressurized but if the seal is not good as soon as the card is pressurized where do you think the ink is going to go it's not going into the printer because the printer does not need ink at this moment it's going to go around the stem out the side and into your compartment and all over the inside of your printer I lost three cartridges full of ink that way. Imagine the mess. And I'm thanking God right now that I did not 
ruin the printer by maybe short circuiting some of the internal components because basically it was all externally leaked. And so, yeah, it was a huge, huge mess. Now, I sell the tips for the refilling process. It is these right here. They have a little slot cut in them. I do that. I do that very accurately. These are the tips that people try to sell you. These are no good, okay? These will not work at all. I found a source for these. All you have to do is load the ink, put it into the port, and press. That's it. All you have to do. This has not been modified yet, so I cannot do anything with it yet. But anyway, that is all you do. If everything is working, it'll work. If you have damaged that O-ring, remember, these are only used one time, and then you toss them or recycle them to some source like, um, you know, staples. You're not supposed to do anything else with it. They're not supposed to be refilled. But by doing this process, and if done very carefully, you will not damage that very critical part, which is that O-ring. That O-ring, make believe this is the stem that enters from the printer. When you insert the cart into the printer, that O-ring has to seal against that stem. If it's not sealing, then as pressure is applied to the bag, it leaks around it and all over the place. That's what is happening. So guys, there's nothing you could do to fix that, okay? Those O-rings are not available for sale from anyone. The only way is to restart again. If you have a chip that is properly resetting and you buy a fully empty cart from eBay or some other source, remove the chip. You're going to now use that new cart, that new empty cart, with still a pristine O-ring. You're going to remove all of the parts like on the video. And then you're going to proceed to pop the rear cap off just slightly. All you have to do is partially pop it off. There are two retaining posts. You just have to pop one out of the way. That will allow you to inject ink without any problems. And that is it. And then you replace everything back. Make sure that everything is replaced the way it's supposed to be. The way it originally was on the cartridge. And that is it. You will not have any problems. There's no way to externally test it. You can pressurize this, this port here all you want. It's not going to be the same. Because you need that ink stem from the printer to enter the port. And that is when you're going to know if you're going to have a leak. Unfortunately, the only way to know is when you pop it into the printer. That is the only time. So if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. But if you do it this correctly and you keep your cartridge valves in good condition without any kind of, you know, forceful type treatments, they will serve you the life of your printer. Okay. So that is it. This is an old subject, but it keeps cropping up. Apparently, there are people still out there with these awesome printers, the 3800 and the 3880. And I wish we could do that to the P800 because guess what? The cartridges are identical. They just have different chips. That is the only thing that is different. And of course, no way to reset the chips unless you use a chip decoder board, which is, wait a minute, $400. Four having trouble with my hand all right that is it for now i hope you enjoyed this little info type video keep subscribing sharing and liking and until the next time happy printing everybody and bye bye be careful with those t58 cards if you modify them